Welcome to the Neuronauts Classroom. In today's video, we are going to explore how your brain knows how to talk. The language inside your brain. Today we are going to find out how clever your brains are. There are lots of things our brains know how to do for us, and some of them are things we don't even know we know. This boy is asking, how do I know how to talk? What do you think our brains need to know for us to be able to talk? We need to know the words. We need to know how to put the words together to make sentences. We need to be able to make the sounds. This girl is saying, let's find out. Let's find out about one important thing our brains know for us to be able to talk. To do that, we are going to meet some imaginary creatures. Ready? Look, this is a wug. Can you all say that? A wug. What does a wug look like? It has fur. It's pink. It's brown. It has big ears. It's fuzzy. A wug sure is a funny creature. Oh, look, now there are two of them. There are two wugs. Yes, what did you say? Let's listen again. There are two wugs. Oh, right. There are two wugs. Hmm. You added a sound to wug when there were two of them. Listen again. One wug, two wugs. What did you add? Two wugs. What sound? <laughs> how did you know how to do that? Have you ever seen a wug before? No. Have you ever said the word wug before? No. But you all agree that we say two wugs. That's what everyone said, right? Yes. Wow. Your brain knew what to do, even though you had never heard of a wug before. Amazing. Now, let's look at another imaginary creature. This is a bick. Can you all say that? A bick. What does a beak look like? It has horns. It has funny teeth. It only has four fingers. It's blue. A beak is another really funny creature. Oh, look. Now there are two of them. There are two beaks. Yes. What did you say? Let's listen again. There are two beaks. Oh, right, there are two bicks. You did it again. You added a sound to bick when there were two of them. Listen again. One bick, two bicks. But wait a minute, I'm not sure it's the same sound as before. What did you add? Let's listen. One bick, two bicks. Two bicks. What's that sound? But that's not the same sound you used for wugs. How did you know how to do that? Have you ever seen a bick before? No! Have you ever said the word bick before? No! Have you ever said the word bicks before? No! But you all agree that we say two bicks. That's what everyone said, right? Yes! Wow, your brain knew it had to do something different, even though you had never heard of a bick before. That's even more amazing. Let's look at one more imaginary creature. This is a cray. Can you all say that? A cray. What does a cray look like? It has really big ears. It's orange. Its teeth don't fit inside its mouth. It is a pink inside. A cray is another really funny creature. Oh look, now there are two of them. There are two... Crays! Yes, what did you say? Let's listen again. There are two... Crays! All right, there are two crays. Let's see what sound you added this time. Listen again. One cray, two crays. Wait a minute. 
Was it a s or a z this time? Let's listen. One cray, two crays. Two crays. What sound? Z. Your brains are so clever. How did you know how to do that? Have you ever seen a cray before? No. Have you ever said the word cray before? No. Have you ever said the word craze before? No. But you all agree that we say two crays. That's what everyone said, right? Yes. Wow. So sometimes we choose s for two or more things. What sound? S. And sometimes we choose z. What sound? Z. How do we know which one to choose? Do we have to remember whether it is s or z for every word we ever hear? Let's see. Here is a zebra. Maybe you learned that when there are two, you say two zebras. Zebra. Z. What sound? Z. Okay. Remember, z for zebras. Now, here is an elephant. Maybe you learned that when there are two, you say two elephants. Elephants. What sound? Okay. Remember, s for elephants. And here is a giraffe. If there are two, you say giraffes. Giraffes. What sound? Okay. Remember that too. We use s for giraffes. Oh, this is getting tricky. I don't know if I can remember this for every animal in the world. And what if I don't know the name of an animal? What happens then? We just found out what happens. We found out by making up animals that we are sure nobody has heard of before. Animals like a wug and a bick and a cray. It turns out you knew what to call two of these animals, even though you had never heard of them before. One wug, two wugs. One bick, two bicks. One cray, two crays. Phew. Luckily, we don't have to remember which sound to use every time we want to talk about more than one of something. Our brains just know what to do. They have learned a rule. They know a rule for talking about two of something, and you didn't even know it. Scientists can find out about the language rules our brains know by doing tests like this one. We call this the WUG test. Now it's your turn to be a WUG scientist. Have a look at the activities in the links at the bottom of this video for more things that you can do to be a WUG scientist. Thank you for joining us at the Neuronauts Classroom for this video. If you enjoyed it, please check out our other videos about how your brain works. For more information, links and worksheets, please go to ccd.edu.au where you can also find more information about the Neuronauts Brain Science Club and how you can help scientists learn more about how your brain works.